Hello, it's Reviews Day Tuesday and today I'm going to be reviewing Captain Marvel and Avengers Endgame. I saw Avengers Endgame for the first time yesterday, but I hadn't seen Captain Marvel yet so I decided that I was going to watch that a couple of days ago in preparation, so I'm going to review both. Firstly, a note about spoilers, this review does contain them, for Endgame especially, so please don't watch this review if you haven't seen these two films and you plan to. I would say that Endgame is probably the most important Marvel film to watch without having had any spoilers. Okay, let's start by talking about Captain Captain Marvel. This film was released earlier on this year and it is our introduction to Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, played by Brie Larson. The film is set in 1995 and it follows the amnesiac Danvers, who believes she is called Vares. She crashes to Earth and starts to learn about her past and begins to learn that everything is not quite as it seems. It sees her teaming up with Nick Fury, played by Samuel L. Jackson. It is his first meeting with a superhero and it leads to his setting up of the Avengers Initiative. One one of the things I really loved about this film was the whole prequel aspect. It shows the birth of many things which go on to be relevant or crucial to earlier films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially with regards to S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury and the Tesseract. I also really enjoyed the structure of this film and how the narrative plays out. You know, we start off with Vers and not knowing that much about her and then she starts to puzzle together everything we start to too. I really loved how the probing of her memories by the Skrulls was portrayed. That whole sequence was one of my highlights of the film. I really rated Larson's portrayal of Danvers. She's cheeky and strong and stubborn and funny and she carries the film so well and sets its tone. And there were brilliant performances throughout. It's so wonderful to see Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury playing such a central role in this film. It was also really fun seeing a younger Coulson played by Clark Gregg. Annette Benning was wonderful. Ben Mendelsohn was fantastic as Talos. I loved his portrayal so much. It really makes the film work and gives it a lot of depth. And I love the character of Maria Rambo, played by Lashana Lynch, Carol Danvers' closest friend, who is a fantastic character and such an important voice in the film. And also Goose is the best. So yeah, Captain Marvel is a film that I really enjoyed. It's so fantastic to see a female Marvel lead. I love how powerful she is and how layered she is as a character. I was really impressed with this film. I thought it was interesting and funny and entertaining and well-paced, and I like what it added to the MCU timeline. I will give Captain Marvel 4.5 out of 5. I think this is my favourite Marvel film after Thor Ragnarok and Black Panther. That's my top three. And this includes Avengers Endgame. I preferred Captain Marvel to Endgame. Speaking of which, I'm now going to review Avengers Endgame. Just another reminder, this does include spoilers. Please don't watch it if you haven't seen the film. This film was released in April and it is the sequel to Avengers Infinity War. It is the 22nd film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it sees the survivors of Infinity War trying to reverse those events and eliminate the damage caused by Thanos. This film is the culmination of a very long arc and I I think it does a remarkable job of tying things together. There are so many characters for a start, so many plot strands to keep track of, and it manages to not be disappointing in lots and lots of ways. This could so easily have been a disappointing film, and I would not have been surprised if it had been, but it wasn't. It gives so many characters a moment to shine, it has so many fun cameos, it references or ties up so many plots or relationships from earlier films, and it has a very long runtime, but it uses that runtime really well to tie everything together relatively neatly. I mean, as neatly as you can tie something together when you've added time travel to the mix. So the time travel thing is quite new. I mean, there have been elements of it before, but not to this extent or with this method. It adds a lot of possibilities and probably also some complications to future Marvel films. I love how it gave us as an audience a way of going back and looking at events of past films. It felt like a nice payoff and I love how it gave us the opportunity to look at those events in a different way as well. You know, the battle and the aftermath of Avengers Assemble, events in Thor The Dark World, the memorable opening to the first Guardians of the Galaxy film. It was really fun and rewarding as a long-time Marvel viewer, and also probably really confusing if you hadn't seen all the Marvel films. The film more or less kept a handle on the time travel thing. I will admit that I got a bit confused sometimes. It was rather vague about its rules for time travel. It said more about what time travel wasn't than what it was, which did lead to some fun references to time travel films. The main rule that I got was the one that Banner said, which was that changing their past doesn't change their present, but that it instead creates branched off alternate realities, which explains how some things work, like Nebula killing her past self, the final battle with past Thanos. It also makes me slightly more confused when I think too much about things, like past Loki escaping with a stone, and past Gamora being supposedly still in this present, and Steve living through the past, which I liked, by the way, I liked that closure to the Captain America story 
and the passing on of the baton to Sam. I love how the events of Infinity War led to some different characters getting a chance to shine. Clint Barton was back, I missed him in the last film, and I loved his arc in this film, and I think the opening to this film was my favourite opening to a Marvel film ever. It was so different and it was so powerful because of it. Similar to Clint, I loved how Ant-Man was involved in this film. I always prefer the character when he is around other superheroes. I love how Paul Rudd portrays him when he is surrounded by other powered people. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the only Marvel film that I haven't seen. I was thinking of trying to watch it before this film, but in the end I didn't. Now I kind of wish that I had, but never mind, I'll see it eventually. Also, I love how crucial Nebula was to this film. I love generally how the Guardians have been brought in to the rest of the films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but especially Nebula because I love her character and I love Karen Gillan, and I was very happy. I was surprised at how little Captain Marvel was in this film, mainly I think because of the um, end credit scenes during Infinity War and Captain Marvel where they were both about her being summoned to help. I mean she was there and I loved how she teamed up with the other Avengers both at the beginning confrontation with present Thanos and the end confrontation with past Thanos. Time travel makes sentences weird. I mean, she didn't really need to be helping find the Infinity Stones, and I guess she's not Earth-based, so it does make sense for her not to be there the whole time. But then the Guardians aren't Earth-based either, and they felt more present. I felt like there was a little bit of the element of how Scarlet Witch um, is sometimes, you know, held back in battle, because they're both really powerful and it kind of unbalances things, and there's less opportunity for other characters powers and strengths to be useful. I mean, Thor and Hulk are other examples that spring to mind. Um, I think it's happened to them both before, probably other examples I'm not thinking of right now. This film was really exciting and funny. Uh, I love how funny the Marvel films can be. They have a tone that I really enjoy. I love all the fun produced by unusual team-ups. And it was also a very moving film on several occasions, especially at the end. I loved the funeral scene and seeing all the characters there in their little groups. That was a lot and I also loved that bit in the battle where all of the Vanished returned in their groups that they had been in in Infinity War. It was really special, and I was very happy with how the film left the characters. I'm very excited to see what will happen in the future, and I don't think I could have hoped for a better ending, really, to this whole section of the MCU. The film had to do a lot of things that were very, very difficult, and it managed to be, I thought, well-balanced and not too exposition-heavy, but it gave us closure and excitement and payoff. I will give Avengers Endgame 4.3 out of 5. I would love to know what you think about either of these two films if you have seen them. Please, if your comment does include spoilers, please have a spoiler warning, just just in case. Let's move across to the end screen. If you would like to see my latest video or some more mouse reviews, then you can do so below me here. And you can also subscribe to my channel or visit my website if you should wish to beside me here. And also, if you fancy checking out my Patreon, then the link to that is in the description below. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you later on in the week.